All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sanko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of good crypto news stuff for you today. Just got a few articles to talk about real quick. Uh, namely, Bitcoin over $6,000 on average across the exchanges. But the main news today is that uh, people are shocked he went there. Crypto takes sides on Binance's alleged Bitcoin reorganization plan. And this would have been uh, the great evil in terms of Bitcoin. And again, everybody's shocked that he even suggested this in the first place. In case you don't know what this is, let's take a little read. So in a lengthy debate, still playing out on social media, Binance received mixed reviews after CEO CZ appeared to suggest there was a plan to conduct a reorganization of the Bitcoin blockchain. So the step would theoretically allow the transactions involving the Bitcoin hackers stole from Binance to no longer fall under their control. And at the same time, an entire day's worth of user transactions would become void. So reorgs uh, to fix erroneous transactions are extremely difficult to do for decentralized blockchains and in the case of bitcoins de facto impossible due to consensus demands required so in case you missed out uh, binance was hacked for 7000 bitcoin this equated to about 40 42 million dollars or so in bitcoin at the time and it's probably a little bit more now so they decided that maybe one of the options would be to reorganize the entire Bitcoin blockchain back an entire day before it happened. Uh, and again, that would make an entire day's worth of transactions become void. So everything you've sent that day would become void. That would mess up the entire ecosystem. Uh, that would be like, again, reorganizing the fiat system. And uh, so every transaction that you made that day uh, would become void and null. You'd get all your money back and uh, vendors would not get their money for what they had sold you uh, it'd be an absolute fiasco and <clears throat> it's wonder that it was even uh, done in the first place or even suggested rather. So as Bitcoin has previously reported, more centralized blockchains can conduct similar activities more easily. EOS, for example, reversed r transactions late last year in an episode which likewise uh, attracted negative attention. So, uh, you know, Binance loses 7,000 7, Bitcoin about 40 million some dollars worth of Bitcoin, uh, and they plan to uh, possibly reorganize the blockchain. But there are many other exchanges that have lost even more in terms of Bitcoin losses. NiceHash, for example, lost about some 4,000 some odd Bitcoin uh, when NiceHash was hacked. That was equivalent to about 60 some million dollars at the time. And they didn't think about reorganizing the blockchain. Uh, you know, uh, you got Quadrica that got uh, kind of hacked. I don't understand uh, the, you know, and then somebody died, and then, but anyway, lots of exchanges have been hacked, and none of them ever proposed to reorganize the entire blockchain to get their money back, so it seemed very greedy of Binance to do this, uh, very, very shady indeed. So while Zhao subsequently explained that the idea remained hypothetical following discussions and that Binance would not pursue any form of the reorganization, uh, some reactions criticized him for mentioning the topic in the first place. Ridiculous. So Mike Novogratz um, vented rare comments on the topic after Zhao drew a comparison between his plans and efforts by Ethereum developers several years ago. I'm shocked that Zhao went even, uh, even went there. Talk of forking or reorganizing the blockchain reorganizing uh the blockchain is close to hearsay uh to heresy excuse me uh not quite the same word heresy he wrote on twitter when the ethereum community did it uh the project was like five months old a baby bitcoin has now has a hundred billion market cap it is a legitimate store of wealth again so reorganizing it would be horrible that mean all the transactions that you made for that day if you actually bought something in bitcoin that means the person who sold you an actual product for bitcoin uh they just didn't get the Bitcoin, but you got the product. It would have been it would have been devastating for the Bitcoin world, uh, and it would have just basically undermined all of Bitcoin uh, itself as a currency that you could just uh, you could just at any time you want uh, reorganize it back a day, which is again uh, re require a massive amount of computing power, and it'd be it'd be horrible to do that. <clears throat> 
So Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin also added a rebuttal, arguing Ethereum's actions did not constitute a reorg. Uh, Ethereum did a surgical irregular state change. We never even considered actually rolling back the chain uh, to undo the hack. The collateral damage from that um, would have been huge and possibly fatal. Binance uh, backup fund will cover the losses endured by users, while the event appeared to have little impact on buoyant cryptocurrency markets. Uh, Bitcoin price shedded $200, but it subsequently rebounded, which I showed you yesterday that we were at 5,900 or so, and then it went to 5,700 or so. So it did it did uh, spook the market a little bit, bring it down a couple hundred bucks. But uh, other than that, uh, a reorganization, even just mentioning it, uh, is just w one of the greediest things I think I've ever heard. Uh, $40 million, sure, is a big loss, but to uh, Binance uh, and their yearly income, is it really? So moving on uh, to more Binance news, because, uh, uh, you know... Uh, the way it's going right now. So hackers are shuffling Binance's stolen coin. So a team of uh, at blockchain services company CoinFirm has been watching the erratic movements of the Bitcoin associated with the 40 million in the latest Binance breach. So uh, at, on May 8th, the hacker or hackers moved 1,214, uh, about 7 million bit, uh, dollars in Bitcoin. So uh, to new addresses and then moved another 1,337 to new two new addresses held by the hacker. Very elite of them to uh, move that particular amount, eh? Uh, this is the fourth major exchange hack of the year with Cryptopia, Dragon X, Bitch, uh, and Bitthumb. Um, well, and I guess you could kind of put Quadrica in there as well, uh, even though that really wasn't a hack. That was just a, a lot of uh, coin missing. So the hack took place uh, at 5.15 p.m. on May 7th when hackers dragged over 7,000 from a single Binance hot wallet into a number of smaller wallets in a single transaction. The hackers then moved the smaller amounts into smaller wallets. Given the nature of Bitcoin blockchain, it's easy to see where each Bitcoin um, is going, but it's difficult to perform real forensics on the wallets in order to understand who or what created them. So here we go with CoinFirm, uh, you know, talking about how they're, the coins are moving with each tweet. Um, you know, coin analysis shows 1,227 uh, 12, uh, 1, Bitcoin of the Binance hack funds moved to two new addresses. One holds 707 BTC, one holds uh, 520 BTC. So they are shuffling them around to various wallets. So why the brisk back and forth movement? Uh, so writer and blockchain analyst thinks that the hackers are trying to erase their tracks, money laundering 101, breaking up the transactions into smaller and smaller amounts, making them more and more difficult to track. So eventually these are going to be so hard to track uh, that uh, they're probably going to get away with this uh, anonymously. So. Uh, they'll just be able to split them up, move them around, maybe transfer them around to other cryptocurrencies, and then eventually uh, sell them in the black market or put them on an exchange because they'll so be, they'll be so mixed by then uh, that the exchanges might not be able to recognize if it is a uh, hot Bitcoin or not. <clears throat> So again, another hack that will probably go um, without any kind of arrests or anything like that. Uh, so in further news, Facebook reverses ban on cryptocurrency ads. So they do a 180 here. So Facebook updated its advertising policy to once again allow cryptocurrency related ads, considering uh, they're trying to make their own cryptocurrency, which I would call a website token at best. Facebook announced in a blog post today that it's going to once again allow advertising related to cryptocurrency and blockchain. Previously, only a limited number of pre-approved advertisers were permitted to run crypto related ads. So while we still require people to apply uh, to run ads promoting cryptocurrency starting today, we will narrow this policy to no longer require pre-approval for ads related to blockchain technology, industry news, education, yada, yada. So uh, there's going to be a lot of fake news on Facebook uh, again, or more fake news on Facebook, I suppose. And uh, now, while I don't uh, disagree with this policy to allow more crypto ads, and of course, Google uh, removed theirs and Facebook and uh, a while back, but, um, you know, no longer pre-approval for ads. So, you know, you just like, I like how they, you know, still required to apply to run ads, but we don't require pre-approval for ads. Hmm. 
Right. Okay. Fair enough. But um, yeah, uh, if you happen to use Facebook, I don't even know who really does anymore except for like uh, moms. But uh, other than that, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of fake crypto news popping up. Whole mess of Ponzi schemes are going to be coming right out of the woodwork here soon. But that may be good for crypto, uh, at least in terms of the actual real projects that will be able to advertise on it. Then 2017 is money poured into the sector. Scams proliferated ICOs with uh, cobbled together WordPress websites uh, with and unverifiable and oftentimes fake teams were able to raise hundreds of millions of dollars from unsuspecting investors and these scams were profitable so much so that many of these companies were willing to pay a premium for advertising on platforms that could attract additional victims facebook was one of these hotbeds for crypto related advertising to combat this sudden explosion uh in january 2018 following the peak of the market facebook announced a new policy which outright banned crypto ads uh, and that was along with google facebook wasn't the only one google uh banned ads in march a few months later after Facebook's decision. So that was kind of, um, you know, a further detriment to the bear market that we that we perceived uh, towards the beginning of 2018. And, you know, without Google and without Facebook being able to advertise actual real products, uh, along with these fake ones, um, you know, that that was a big detriment to the crypto as a whole. But um, the, the problem with ICOs is that you don't know if they're uh, real or not. You, you don't know. Even if it is a real team on there, you still don't know. Am I going to get my coins? Uh, are these just going to run away with my money? Is this just fake completely? Uh, or am I going to get my coins? But is it just going to dump after that and never go anywhere? Um, you know, because Here's the thing with ICOs. I, I, on one end, I agree with giving people money to develop a project like that, but on the other end, I disagree with it. Sort of a double-edged sword. That um, so, let's say I'm going to make a project with some other developers, and we all get twenty million dollars. We raise twenty million, hundred million dollars, whatever, in an ICO. What incentive now do we have to continue developing? We got your money, right? We're not getting money every day now, uh, like a paycheck or money when we complete our project. Normally, when you complete the project, it goes on an exchange and honestly, it just dumps in price and it never goes anywhere from there 90% of the time. So they have no incentive, if you think about it, to continue. Uh, that would be kind of like going to McDonald's and applying. And then they hire you and they say, okay, here's we're going to give you your year's salary up front which again, it's McDonald's, so it's probably not a lot. Uh, we're going to give you $20,000 salary up front the day that you start. And you're like, wow, that's fantastic. And uh, they're like, you're going to come in Tuesday though, right? And you're like, oh yeah, no, I'm going to come in Tuesday, right? You already got the $20,000. You don't get any money there now weekly or bi-weekly or whatever, right? You got your money up front. You don't need to come in the next day. So that's kind of how ICOs have been going for a really long time. They received all their money up front and they have very little incentive to keep the project going. It's not really gonna make them that much money when it actually goes live. They're gonna have some of the coins set aside for themselves and they can sell it once the bear market starts to hit and they can just start selling and selling and selling and very little incentive to keep the project going. <clears throat> So in June 2018, Facebook loosened its policy to allow crypto-related ads from select pre-approved investors. And although cryptocurrency ads are once again permitted on Facebook, advertisements for ICOs will still be rejected. Eh, good for them. If history proves accurate, Google may follow Facebook's lead and once again allow cryptocurrency advertising as well, which will uh, not just only help the bull market, uh, to be totally honest. So moving on to coin market cap, we're at 188 billion market cap two days ago. We were at 188. The, yesterday we were at 184. Now 188 again. So we've gained 4 billion since the last time I made a video. And prices are up, up, up. But you can see Bitcoin is really dominating the scene. 57.1% dominance. Uh, when during the bear market we would see 50%, 52%. Um, so it's really going up. So more people are investing in Bitcoin, and that could be likely because of the whole Bitfinex uh, fiasco going on right now, where everyone's just nobody can get their U.S. dollar out of it. Nobody can uh, transfer money to their bank account and get out. Uh, so everybody has to buy Bitcoin and then send that Bitcoin to another exchange or to their private wallet, etc., to essentially escape uh, Bitfinex. But in order to do that, there is a few hundred dollar premium 
on Bitfinex, uh, where you're going to not get as much Bitcoin as you would just about anywhere else. But it's better to do that than to lose all of your money if something happens to Bitfinex. And you should be cautious with your money. Maybe nothing at all will happen to Bitfinex. Maybe this will just all blow over like a lot of problems in cryptocurrency do. But um, better be safe with your money and lose a few bucks than lose all of your money. So um, you can see that there's a lot of red with most of the altcoins um, that just aren't doing so well. Ethereum is having a lot of trouble getting to $200, whereas Bitcoin is not having much trouble at all getting over $6,000. So it's kind of interesting, um, you know, Litecoin going basically nowhere for uh, a, a, quite a while now. EO still under $5. Uh, Binance Coin, of course, doing really well um, as usual. But um, yeah, as you can see, XRP still going nowhere, even in this like Eh, what you could say is a temporary bull market, or at least the start of the bull market. Maybe we're lighting the tip of the fuse type deal. Uh, still at 29 cents, still at 30 cents, depending on where you look at it. So XRP, uh, nobody wants to touch that with a 50-foot pole right now. And even Cardano and things like that, just not doing too well at all. Uh, an interesting pump in Bitcoin SV for whatever reason, probably Bitcoin SV developers pumping their own coin to make it look like a useful coin. But uh, otherwise, uh, Bitcoin doing really, really well right now. Now, in terms, uh, some people are, you know, kind of asking me from time to time on live streams, is it better to go into Bitcoin or alts at the moment? Uh, and of course, I would like to say that, uh, you know, there is likely some alts out there that are going to uh, savagely outperform Bitcoin as they usually do. Um, you know, like, uh, for example, in 2017, the winner clearly was XRP. It was, uh, you know, hundreds or thousands of a cent when it came out. Uh, and then it reached like $3 and 50 cents. So it was just the ultimate ultimate winner of 2017 in terms of investment <clears throat> and selling at the height of the bull market. But, um, you know, and Bitcoin performed really well itself. It went up 20 fold from 1000 to 20,000. But uh, a lot of other altcoins performed better. But the, the problem with that is choosing the correct altcoin that's going to do that. And that's honestly, um, you know, a matter of good research. But at the same time, a bit of luck as well. Uh, and so Bitcoin is just sort of that uh, that safe bet that always seems to go up in price and it does it slowly but steadily, uh, which is just always generally a better investment than something that goes up really, really quickly as it will go down very, very quickly. Uh, and you might not be able to sell it in time. But that's all I have for you guys today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, it helps me out a lot. My social media in the description below. Follow me on those when you can. And... Um, Hope you guys enjoyed it, and as usual, I will see you guys next time.